for me. years old, boxing trainer, coach, teacher, um, and also a fighter. I've been involved in boxing since probably 2000, the year 2000. Growing up in Philly, first of all, the fighting is just a thing that everybody does. And then um, getting into boxing made you feel important. It made me feel like, you know I mean, I had something to really look forward to. And then when I started learning the history of Philadelphia fighters, it was more intriguing because, you know, you're like, damn, I wonder one day if I could be a part of those names somehow, some way, you know what I mean? My first experience with boxing was when I was about five years old. My dad used to train, he, used to, he took me to the gym a few times and um, I watched my dad fight two times. And you know what I mean? He wasn't a big fighter, but he had like a couple amateur fights. And that was my first experience with it. Um, of course, growing up in the neighborhoods, putting the gloves on, challenging each other on the street, getting in fights in the neighborhood, stuff like that. And then around 12 years old, going on to 13, um, my mom said, you know, you should, you're doing a lot of fighting, you should go to the gym. So I walked around the corner to the gym, and I don't know, I fell in love with boxing. So my original trainers, uh, Marvin Jordan, and Kevin Carmody Sr., you know what I mean? They, they did a lot for me as a kid, you know what I mean, growing up in this sport, and they gave me a lot that I didn't realize at the time, but as a man now today, you know what I mean? I appreciate them a whole lot for that. They really gave me everything, you know what I mean? And um, you know how it is when you're young, you just don't really realize a lot. But as I got older, I realized what they was trying to do for me and they did for me. And you know what I mean? It was a world of information, you know what I mean? A world of experience and I appreciate it all. Being a fighter and then transitioning to a coach, I believe it, it has gave me a different uh, level and skill set as a coach because I know what it's like to be in certain situations as a fighter, you know what I mean? To be on the, the, the upper hand or the uh, or having the underhand, you know what I mean? It's, it's like some guys, I feel like it's easy to tell somebody what to do, but if you really don't understand what they going through at that point, it's gonna be tough to get them out of it. And I think that's what separates coaches, you know what I mean? I think all coaches are good coaches because we all here for a great cause, you know what I mean? We, we dealing with the youth, but in those pro situations, it's like, I don't think everybody built for that. And I mean, I'm, and I'm glad I did have a career. I remember I was about 26 years old, 20, going to 27. Um, I was in the gym and I was watching all these kids, like training, but they didn't really have anything to look forward to. And they, like, it was kids that could fight. You know what I mean? They didn't know it, but I knew it. And I'm watching them. And they had coaches, but the coaches kind of was like, just having them train. And I'm like, yo, I think we should get a Golden Glove team this year. And like, we should get these guys ready for the Golden Gloves. Cause we had like another three months, but I have been watching these kids for probably about four or five months. So I'm like, yo, I think we should get the squad together and then put them in the gloves. So we put them in the gloves, um, about nine of them, two of them made it to the state champ. So, you know I mean, we did pretty good. And that's kind of where I started coaching. The first quality I look for is, you know what I mean? If a guy has a listening ear, you know what I mean? If I tell him to do something, and he do it exactly the way I tell him, that's a great quality. Um, second is his, his determination. You know what I mean? If I, get, if, I get, if I tell him to do 200 sit-ups and he quit at 40, you know what I mean? Let me know he's not willing to push. But if he if it take him a whole hour to do the 200, but he still do it, you know what I mean? I know he got somebody that's gonna push. You know what I mean? I know I got a guy that's gonna really fight for me. Second, of course you look for the abilities, you know what I mean, the things like that, to see where his skill set may go. You know what I mean? And then when they spar, you're trying to see if he already got blood in his mouth or if he need blood in his mouth. You know what I mean? A lot of people, they're not going to fight. And a lot of people don't know they will fight, you know what I mean? Until they get in there. So once you see them go, that's when things get exciting. Once you start seeing the guy spar, then you really know what you got. Honestly, there's no better feeling in the world than knowing that you train for a fight and you're getting ready to challenge yourself and challenge another person. You know what I mean? Test your skill set, test your mindset, you're testing your composure, you know what I mean? It's just a big test. And also, it's a great feeling getting in the ring and hearing your name be called. You know what I mean? And then everybody watching. The most rewarded moments as from being a coach, me specifically, is winning, of course. You know what I mean? When you've been getting a guy ready for two months, 
and it's fight night and he, he go in there and take 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 care of business. Um a few highlights for my career working with Gabe Rosado, working with heavyweights like Joey DeWaco, I mean working with Todd and Think May, working with Cool Boy Steph, working with Boots Ennis, working with Jabril Noble, you know what I mean? It's a list of them. I mean, all great guys, and it was just, you know what I mean, we had a good time working with everybody. You always want to push them. You always want to, you know what I mean, like, surprise them. Some days I don't tell the guys they spawn. Some days I just throw it on them. And then some days I, we might not even put gloves on. We just working out the whole time. Strip condition and things like that. And then some days we might not do nothing but sit here and talk, because that might be all they need for the day. You know what I mean, sometimes you got a guy who will work so hard, he'll overwork himself. You know what I mean? So sometimes you got to cheat him into a break. You know what I mean? And um, I know it sounds crazy, but it's like that sometimes. The body needs rest. The mind needs rest. Sometimes, you know, you sit down, you just talk to them, get them talking for about an hour, just cool them out. You know what I mean? Then they'd be like, we ain't going to train today. He's like, nah, you good. You know what I mean? I mean, outside the ring, the preparation is, is, is more about uh, staying composed and relaxing yourself and thinking things out. It's the same inside, but outside is important too because guys get in trouble or get put in situations they don't know how to handle. And you know, they, they, they handle it the wrong way sometimes. You know what I mean? So you so you try to be like a father figure or an uncle or a big brother to these guys and you try to remind them of certain things don't have to go so far. And then inside it's the same way because if you do a little bit too much, sometimes it gets you put in a bad situation. You know what I mean? You don't want that. So it just, it's really, you know, working on temperament. You know what I mean? And just making sure your guys prepared, that's all. Some obstacles I went through as a coach and as a fighter, um, I'll give you one as a fighter. Um, when I was coming up, you know, having my children being born and stuff like that, and then having to work and then having to prepare for fights, that was one of the toughest times of my life, you know what I mean? Because I'm worried about bills, I'm worried about my kids making sure they eat, you know, making sure things are taken care of with my family, and then still trying to prepare for a fight. And nobody's really worried about me, you know what I mean? It's, it was kind of crazy, but I got through those times. Um, I made it happen. And obstacles I've been through as a trainer is when you got a guy who, I think one of the biggest things is when you got a guy like that has a problem focusing. Great fighter, but it's hard for him to focus. You know what I mean? But you, you try to motivate him and, and push him towards the right way. You know what I mean, if to make things happen, it's tough, but you know what I mean? You gotta just do it. Honestly, I love fighting, man. I just love, I love what a fight is. It's between two men, you know what I mean? We don't have to have a problem with each other, but we do have to settle some things. Um, and just the whole way it's put together. Training camp, you know what I mean? And we're gonna, we're gonna fight with just our hands. I like that. Everything about that is exciting to me. I like trying to outsmart the other team. You know what I mean? I like trying to outwork the other team. It's just everything about boxing and fighting I love. You know what I mean? It's exciting. If I had to pick one to be a fighter or coach, I can't pick one, it's hard. It's because when you're a fighter and you're in there fighting, you it's a high for me. Like like I always compare it to people who like to ride roller coasters, dirt bikes and stuff. I, that's stuff that I don't do. But fighting, is that, that's what get my blood going. So that's kind of like a selfish thing for me. Like I, I like to still get in fights, um, but coaching, I'm a lot more strict with coaching. I'm a lot more strategic with coaching. I'm a lot more, you know, I'm tuned in. So it makes me focus more. So I love coaching too, you know what I mean? Just because I got something to look forward to, you know what I mean? And I always get locked in. It's like, I turn into a different person and I, and I just love the challenge. I mean, just, just keep paying attention. You know what I mean? Keep supporting, I'll do the same. And I appreciate my man Jimmy here for showing love. Follow him, global, but they keep holding the middle, my autonomy, the